All right. It's 3 p.m. Do you know where your live cooking show is? <laughs> it's right here on Facebook and Instagram at Colavita USA. Hi, everybody. I'm Elena, and welcome to another episode of Colavita Cooking Live. I'm very excited to be back with you today cooking another Italian classic pasta dish. So what are we making today? We are making fettuccine alfredo. Yes, I know. So in New Jersey right now, we just had a huge storm roll through, thunder, lightning, darkness, uh, looks pretty grim. So buttery, cheesy noodles seems like a great thing to have today. Um, seems like a great thing to have any day. But before I tell you what we are using in this dish, which is not much, and probably I will not take much of your time today either, I'm going to tell you what we're not using in this fettuccine alfredo pasta. We are not using any cream. Yes, I know, this may come as a shock to you. It was a shock to me. But a traditional fettuccine alfredo does not have any cream in it. So I'm going to show you how to achieve a creamy pasta without any cream. Sounds like it can't happen, but I'm gonna tell you it can. And the key to all of this, if you've been watching for a couple episodes now, is the pasta water. Please, please, please always save your pasta water. The reason is, oh, we're brighter all of a sudden. Thank you. <laughs> the reason is that the pasta water saves that starch from the pasta, and that is gonna thicken your sauce and make it creamy in a way without actual cream. So always save your pasta water. For this recipe, I've actually saved two full cups of the pasta water. And I am going to add that, I'm gonna add one of those two cups to this pan that I've already heated up a little bit. So let me do that and then I'll explain a few other things, okay. So I'm going to add about one cup. Let's see how I'm doing here. Almost. That's good. Okay. One cup of pasta water is in our giant skillet. And I want that to come up to a simmer, boil, you know, like a, a healthy simmer, I guess, because then I am going to melt my butter. And I have half a stick of butter here cut into table size cube, tablespoon size cubes that I'm going to add gradually. So essentially what happens here is we have our pasta water, we have our butter, half a stick. I have Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, which I want to talk to you guys very seriously about the cheese in just a second. And then I have a pound of Colavita fettuccine that I've already cooked perfectly al dente, maybe a little undercooked actually, because I'm going to bring it back into this uh, pan with the water. So it's going to absorb some of that. So I err on the side of undercooking my pasta. So one pound of fettuccine. So fettuccine, for those of you guys who don't know, is I had, I had to remind myself how to spell fettuccine a couple times today. It's two T's and two C's, everybody, just so you know. Okay, so fettuccine is a ribbon. It's a flat pasta, um, but it's not very wide like a pappardelle, which would also be a great, uh, a great pasta cut to have for this dish. But this one's a little thinner, but it is flat so that cheese and creaminess can cling to the noodles. However, you know, Traditionally, a fettuccine, if, well, traditionally an Alfredo goes with fettuccine or a flat pasta, but if you've got spaghetti or bucatini, you could use that too. You know, feel free, because um, it's about what we've got on hand, right? So last, last week, was it last week we made the cacio pepe? We made it with the bucatini, and my husband's opinion was that the bucatini is very hard to wrap around the fork. So if you struggle with bucatini as well, feel free to sub in something easier for you. Okay, this is coming up to a simmer. It's not quite there yet. So the other thing we don't really use in this dish is olive oil. I know. 
However, I did use some olive oil after I drained my pasta. I put about a tablespoon or two in there just to keep my noodles loose um, because I don't want them to stick together if they're just sitting there. And I didn't want to make you watch me boil pasta because I thought that would be infinitely boring. Okay, we are simmering, so I'm gonna add my first tablespoon of butter. So the key to adding the butter to the pan is that you want to melt each pat of butter individually into the water before you add the whole thing. So you're gradually getting that butter into the water. And hopefully that will help, theoretically, it will help you achieve a creamier sauce. So I'm going to turn my heat down just a little bit. I'm going to go for my second pat of butter. So last week we made my mom's bow tie pasta with sausage, if you guys were here for that. And I got a few responses that people made it on their own, which I was really excited about. So if you do make anything we make here, you know, please tag us and we would love to repost your glorious pictures of pasta cooking in quarantine. Um, so feel free to tag us with anything that you recreate or if you have follow-up questions, you know, please feel free. We have a question? Uh, she missed, what order do you put the butter and the pasta water in? Ah, okay. So the pasta water goes first and then we add the butter. So if you're just joining us, we're making our fettuccine alfredo and we add one cup of the pasta water to the pan bring it to a boil and then add the butter. I have two more pats of butter, so I'm gonna get those in there. One more, oops. Okay. And then we will add our cheese. So if you have not uh, subscribed to our newsletter, please do. You can find it at colavita.com and you'll be able to find um, You'll be able to get all of these recipes, all the recaps delivered straight to your inbox, plus um, all the recipes upcoming so you can gather what you have and hopefully cook along. So that's a really, really easy way for you to participate. Also on Facebook and Instagram, we have polls. So I'm just here cooking what you guys tell me to. Um, and I think we're gonna have a poll coming up shortly about our next, our next episode, which is going to be a long one. Regardless of which one wins, it's going to be a long one. I don't want to give anything away. Okay, so this is almost melted and I want to talk about the cheese. So this recipe uses Parmigiano Reggiano and you want a really good quality cheese. We don't have a lot of ingredients here. You know, we've got pasta, which of course is cola vita and of course is delicious. And we've got cheese, essentially. Those are our most important ingredients, and butter. So your cheese, when you're picking out a Parmigiano, I'm gonna show this to the camera up here. You wanna look for this rind here that says Parmigiano Reggiano. This is a really nice block of cheese that I have grated. Um, I did not buy pre-grated cheese. I grated this myself in my food processor. So I wanted to keep it intact. And I grated in my food processor because I could get these like little, they're kind of like kernels of cheese. They're not those shreds that you buy in the pre-shredded, uh, the pre-shredded packages. So they're like, they're like little pieces of sand almost, little pebbles. Questions? Do you save your cheese rinds? Yes, of course. I just made a beautiful stock with one of my cheese rinds. So I always, always save them. It's you know, I, I feel like you just have to. It's so good for flavor in a stock. Soups too, so yes. So here I have three quarters a cup of that Parmigiano Reggiano. I'm gonna add it to my simmering butter water is what I'm going to call it. <laughs> and I'm gonna add it gradually. So I don't wanna just dump it in and hope for the best. I'm gonna add I'm gonna say that was a little less than a quarter of a cup. And I'm gonna stir. 
So this dish is a constant attention dish. It's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna take a lot of time, but you wanna stay focused and be here. It's not gonna be like a stew you can kind of leave alone and then walk away and come back later and things are all burned. You wanna make sure that you're paying attention. So I want this to melt into this water. Let's see if that's possible, shall we? <laughs> I think it is. All right, so we're gonna add a little bit more. And I just increased my heat just a bit and I'm constantly, constantly stirring. I feel like with these pastas that we made, you know, we had the carbonara, then we had the cacio pepe, if you've been following us, and now we have this one you know, all kind of simple dishes, but a little bit different in the preparation. And the little tricks are really what that, what brings that dish to life. And if you can remember those little tricks, then I really think that's how you make your dish shine. So for this one, you know, obviously saving your pasta water is, is number one. And then number two is just gradually adding your ingredients and paying attention. You really need to look and see you know, I'm looking in here, I'm seeing, well, the cheese isn't quite melted yet. So I'm going to keep stirring and stirring until it looks the way I want it to. And only then will I keep adding more. So let's see. Now, let's talk about cream for a second, because I'm sure many of you have had a version of fettuccine Alfredo with cream. I have myself. Um, my mom has one written in this little cookbook that she gave us, Fettuccine Alfredo with cream. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I wanted to be traditional and show everyone how to do it this way. So that is what I'm doing. But if you were to use cream, you would add it to your melted butter at, you know, at the beginning stage before you add your cheese. And then you would thicken it. Essentially when cream cooks, it thickens which is what makes it so delicious and amazing. But I'm hopefully here to prove that we can achieve the same thing without cream, which also makes this slightly healthier of a pasta dish. <laughs> slightly. No, it's really not that bad for you. I mean, all things in moderation, like delicious fettuccine Alfredo. Okay. So we are achieving some meltiness here. How do we get a copy of your mom's cookbook? <laughs> well, well, I can ask her to autograph you one and send it to you. <laughs> she would be thrilled. So in order to um, understand my mom's cookbook, you have to understand my mom. <laughs> and by that, I mean, you have to understand how she speaks. There, there are a lot of ingredients that are left out. <laughs> And you just have to know that there might be a cup of sugar that you need to add to that. <laughs> it's, it's a true cook's cookbook. She knows what she's doing and she assumes you do too. <laughs> that being said, there are some real gems in there and I can share a few of them if you guys would like. <laughs> One among them is my mom's amazing apple pie recipe, which she hand delivered yesterday to me. It's in the fridge if you want some. <laughs> um, and it is a deep dish apple pie with not a crust on top, but a crumble topping. It's my brother's favorite thing in the world. So I, I got a hand delivery of that yesterday to my back porch. This is actually already thickening up and getting really creamy, which I'm excited about. We have a little bit more cheese to go. So I haven't had this dish in so long and I remember that I had a, a best friend when I was little who lived across the street and they were from Europe and her mom would make this creamy pasta with ham and peas and when I would go over to dinner there they would serve that to me and I thought it was the most amazing thing ever. This was the most sophisticated dish. So I know sometimes you see like a creamy pasta with peas and ham, very much like an Alfredo with peas and ham. I don't really know where that comes from, but um, I do know that's not what we're making today. Traditionally, it doesn't have any peas and ham, though if you would like to add some, do feel free to do that. 
I'm a big fan of freezer peas. <laughs> Just put them in everything. <laughs> okay. This is so glorious. I'm gonna check if my, yes, my camera is still on up there. So it's becoming this really golden yellow color. And if I could stop spilling it everywhere, we might have some for the actual pasta. Okay. This is kind of like watching the grass grow, everybody. But you know what? Totally, totally worth it. It's like a risotto. You know, you just sit there and you stir for 20 minutes. And then all of a sudden magic happens. Okay, here goes the rest of the cheese. All right, we are in there. Oh my goodness, this looks really good. Okay, so other alterations, you know, you, when I talk about pasta, it doesn't always have to be the entree. You could serve this as a side dish alongside some you know, grilled or roasted chicken, that would be amazing. You know, it's not, it doesn't always have to be, well, I have to have this giant bowl of pasta. It's totally great as a side with your protein and some veggies or a salad. So, you know, think of it like that. Okay. Everything is kind of coming together. Now, one thing is very important. You want more cheese. And by which I mean, you want to save some at the end so you can put a little cheese on it. Sometimes I add a little parsley, a little chopped parsley because I like that to the end, and a little freshly ground black pepper. And that's it. The beauty of this is really the simplicity. Um, ah, okay, I think good things are happening here. I really do. I see the cheese starting to separate and melt. Oh yes, okay. So, are you ready everybody? I'm kind of holding my breath. We are gonna add our pasta. Let me turn this down a little bit to a low, low simmer. Okay, and then I'm gonna add my pasta. I'm probably gonna switch out my cooking implement to my handy tongs here. Okay, everybody get in the pot. Okay, and now I'm going to swirl. Oh my, yeah, it's all over me. I thought that by wearing white today it would be okay because I'm making a sauce that is also white, but alas, I am just tempting fate as we all know. Okay, so here we go. We are swirling the pasta and I'm gonna turn my heat up a little bit, Woo, if I can. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more pasta water. All getting very very creamy and I'm gonna try to turn the heat up again it's not responding to my finger love an induction stove <laughs> okay so the key to this here is just to keep things moving that cheese is fully melted right now and it is beautifully coating the pasta noodles in a creamy heavenly swirl of pasta goodness. There we go. Success. <laughs> okay. So a few things to look out for when you're doing this is one thing is that your cheese might kind of clump together. If that happens, don't panic. This dish is not about panicking. What you should do in that case is you have a little bit right there is just turn up the heat a little bit and add a little bit more pasta water. And then everything will melt again and everything will be happy. It's really just about time. All right. Okay. So for our next episode on Thursday, I think it's going to be, like I said before, it's going to be a long one. We are deciding between two dishes. So I hope you guys will all go to the polls and vote because it's going to be, I think it's going to be close. 
And we have some, you know, I think we have some strong opinions about these next recipes coming up. So I'll be excited to see what you guys choose. Okay. So that is really the whole show. We have some melted cheese here. I'm going to add a touch more pasta water and stir a little bit more. But if you can see, if you want to grab this, this is super creamy. And getting creamier. Okay. So if I were to serve this, what I would do is I would get out my little pasta bowl like so, and I'm going to give it a little twirl. Look at that. Gorgeous. Into the center. And then I'm going to add a little bit more cheese. Could you use sea salt in your pasta water? Oh, interesting. So that's a great question. And I'm glad somebody asked because what I actually do, I use kosher salt and you'll notice that I didn't add any salt to the pan. Look at that. But I heavily salt my pasta water with kosher salt. So, <laughs> so I, I always add like a handful of, of salt to my water. So there's no harm in doing that. You really need to have your noodles properly noodles, your pasta properly salted, because if you don't, they're going to be really bland and you don't want to make up for that completely with Parmesan cheese, even though that is really salty. So most of that salt is just going to drain off in the water. So you don't have to really worry about putting too much salt in, but it should taste like seawater. So I use kosher salt. Sea salt is great. You know, whatever you use is just fine, but make sure to salt your pasta water and then you don't have to salt anything afterwards, which I didn't do. So let's see, we're going to give this a try. It looks appropriately creamy. good. <laughs> it's really good cheese. <laughs> Delicious. It's dinner tonight. Uh, let me see. Let me run through everything just again really quickly since we have the time. Ooh, oh my gosh, it's so creamy in there. Do you ever add fresh basil? Basil would be a great addition to this. Usually I would add fresh parsley but basil would also be really nice. Um, I think the contrast of fresh herbs and this pasta is perfect. So what you could do also, what I'm gonna do, is that I like to save some of my pasta water so that if I wanna reheat this later, like tomorrow, because it's unlikely we're gonna eat this all tonight, I can add a little bit of the pasta water to a pan and it brings it back to life. So. Saving that stuff is really, really key. Um, let's see. What else do I want to tell you about this? Any other questions remaining? That's it? Okay. So, quick review. No cream. Just simmering that butter slowly in the pasta water, adding the cheese gradually, putting in your fettuccine, and then stirring, stirring, stirring. Making sure all those fettuccine pastas are coated perfectly with the sauce taking it out, more Parmesan and a little cracked pepper, or like you guys said, fresh herbs. So next time, I would love for you guys to vote on what we're making. So follow us on Facebook and Instagram, or Instagram, or both, we would love it, and watch out for our polls, and we are going to make what you vote for. In the meantime, if you wanna head over to our website, colavita.com, to sign up for our newsletter, so you can um, get the replay of this, which I will put together shortly, and also get the recipes that we'll be making so you can cook along with us. I really appreciate you guys joining us, and it's always a pleasure. On Thursday, we're gonna, <clears throat> we're gonna be hanging out for a while, so bring a cup of coffee and your notebook and ask a lot of questions.
Would you put shrimp in this dish? Mm. We were just talking about shrimp. <laughs> My husband really wants to put shrimp in this dish, I think. <laughs> you definitely could. You know, I, I think the wonderful thing about these dishes is they're really, they're beautiful in and of themselves. And this is how it was intended to be eaten, simple. But if you wanna use this as a base and a building block for shrimp or chicken, I think it's great and you should definitely do that. And shrimp would be amazing in this. I think it would be delicious. So yeah, <laughs> why not? <laughs> what else? I think that's it. I wish you guys could see how creamy this got. It even got better since I stopped messing with it, which is, you know, how ha what happens with a Mom lot of things. Mom says, is that a serving for two? This is a serving for four <laughs> to six. <laughs> I didn't want to mess with the proportions, so <laughs> we have a lot of pasta in the house now. <laughs> we will be putting some chicken or shrimp with it, most likely. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate you coming. And 3 p.m. on Thursday, I will be back here cooking something you tell me to cook, as usual. Thanks so much, and if you have questions, leave them in the comments, and I will get back to them. Okay.